Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and you just heard me play a little bit with these very old Charlie Persip drumsticks made by the Gretsch Company. So I'm going to show you some vintage sticks today uh, that the masters used, the jazz masters and teachers, and you'll be able to compare these with some modern sticks. So all these older sticks are made from hickory, which was much more common back then than maple, that, that is more common now. And like I said, all these were made by the Gretsch Company. And a lot of times, Gretsch would not dry their wood properly, I believe, because most of these sticks are badly warped, <laughs> as you see there. And they were very inconsistent in their tips as well. But, you know, those guys still played great with them. No problem there. These sticks are in pretty good condition compared to some of the others I have in my collection. And I like to have these as a reference to the sticks that I make today. So I'll show you a little bit of a close-up of these sticks. You can see the names. So we have a Philly Joe Jones stick here. They call that a 5D. We have the Henry Adler Model 1. We have the Art Blakey 1D. We have the Charles Persip that you just heard. And then we have the Mel Lewis stick. And then finally the Louis Belson stick. That's a 4D. And the Mel Lewis is, is a 7D, I believe. They call it, would call this now a 7A. And we'll show you the tips. You've seen these already in, with the better camera. But. And this Charles Persip uh, pair here, you see the tip, it's close, but, you know, not perfect. So that's kind of the way it was back in the day. And you see the other six. So this right here, that's the Joe, Philly Joe Jones stick, which is very, very close to the Henry Adler stick here, as far as the tip goes. And then this tip's completely different. This is the Art Blakey tip, which I like a lot. And I also like the Charles Persip tip that you heard in the demo. And the Mel Lewis stick is the shortest one of them all. It's 14 and a half inches. Wow. And very light. Now Mel also used some other sticks, because I used to see him play all the time, sometimes with a heavier stick, but I guess this was the Gretsch stick that he endorsed. And this Louis Belson stick was fairly long, the longest of all of them. This one's about 16 and a quarter. Very similar in length to my stick, which you see here. My stick's a little bit longer, and of course that's maple. So I like, obviously, a little bit of a longer stick. This, these real short ones are sometimes weird with the balance. Let's give you a little closer shot. You see the hickory there. Very dark. And these are, in, like I said, fairly good shape. Most of these sticks you'll find will be all nicked up and kind of a mess. So... The um, the way that these were made, I believe, was one at a time on a lathe, which is the way I make sticks now. Uh, most of these drum companies have milling machines, and they're just, you know, putting out sticks one by one very, very quickly, uh, just spitting them out, hundreds and hundreds every day. So these were probably made by a couple of individuals who worked at the factory who just made their sticks for years and years. So you can't expect perfection, but um, I don't think that really hampered the playing of these, these.
these great players. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the drum set and we're going to play each one of these sticks. I don't have pairs of all of them, but uh, but I'll let you hear what they sound like on the old Ks, which uh, most of these players, pretty much all of them, maybe except for Louis Belson, used exclusively. So you'll get to hear the original sound on the original cymbal. So we'll start with these Charles Persip uh, sticks that you heard me play with in the opening demo. And these are very light and kind of short, totally different than what I'm used to. So it's a little bit hard to handle with the balance. Uh, being that they're hickory, they're pretty dense. So they do have some weight to them. I'll put all the weights and lengths on the screen here. Uh, we'll, we'll play this on the cymbal here. We'll do this with all the sticks. We'll play both cymbals, but we'll do the close-ups on this 21-inch K from the 1950s. And then I'll compare it with my stick so you can hear the difference. Now, my stick uses uh, this kind of uh, bolero tip, which is a smaller tip. They did not make this kind of tip back then. Uh, I haven't been able to find any, any tip like this from back then. Most of the drummers used an elongated tip. So you'll hear the spread on the cymbal. So that's because of the short length, the very, very thin taper, and the long tip. Now, if you listen to my stick, so it's a much deeper kind of sound, but it's different. They're both great. I would th describe the longer tip as being more transparent and more of a spread. Were the smaller tip and the thicker taper having a more staccato, impactful sound and a little deeper in pitch. That's why it's good to use some different sticks if you want different cymbal sounds. It sounds like a completely different cymbal with each of these sticks. So I'll play just a little more with these on the kit for you, and I'll use all the different symbols. All right, so those are the Charles Persip sticks. That's the only complete pair that I have here. And one's warped and one's a little thinner than the other. Next, we'll check out this um, Philly Joe Jones stick. So this one's a little bit warped, so it's going to feel a little funny. So we'll play this on the symbol for you, the main symbol. As always, using different people's sticks other than your own, it always feels 
pretty strange. But I, I kind of like this stick. It's got a little more length to it than that other one and uh, a little better balance, but it's too thin for me. It's like a 7A uh, as far as being very, very thin. I would say it's, you know, maybe 0.5 half inch or, or, or less, you know, but it's very, very thin. So we'll compare this with a modern stick, which is my stick. So here's the Philly Joe Jones stick. And here's a modern stick. So once again, the same kind of thing with the very thin taper, the elongated tip, and the thin kind of lighter stick gives you that, you know, more transparent sound. Not a lot of definition, but it sounds really pretty on these old Ks. So let's look at another stick. This is the, um, Hen the Art Blakey stick, I'm sorry. Uh, this has an even thinner taper, but it's about the same thickness as the Philly Joe stick. And just out of curiosity, it's exactly the same length, pretty much. Maybe an eighth of an inch longer. This one feels really weird. <laughs> it's hard to play fast with it. Of course, Art would throw the stick at the cymbal like this. So that was kind of the way he played. But, um, but it's a very, very light stick, way too light for me. Uh, but I don't mind the tip. I kind of think it's cool, and I kind of like the way it sounds. It's got, definitely got a different sound to it than those others. Next we have the Henry Adler model, which is very, very similar to the uh, Philly Joe model. Of course, this is the most warped one at all. Looks like it's it's kind of at a right angle there, so <laughs> uh, not good. All right. So next we have the this is the thinnest, shortest one, the Mel Lewis stick. Kind of my favorite sounding stick. It's just too short, 14 and a quarter inches. But definitely sounds a little bit closer to this. And of course, Mel Lewis always had a spectacular cymbal sound, always. Next we have the Louis Belson stick. This has got the weirdest tip, as you saw when I had the close-up of them. It's kind of almost like a rectangle. So we'll see what that sounds like. Yeah, that is 
not pleasant to me. It might sound good when I go listen to it. It feels like there's nothing in my hand. This is the lightest of the sticks. Yeah, so I'll have to see what it sounds like when I go into the control room, but it, um, it's very thin here sounding, and it's extremely light. But the balance is good on it. It's a balanced stick. It's just very light. And this is, it definitely looks like hickory, so it's just light for a hickory stick. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think that's all of them. So we'll go through them all uh, again here short in a short little snippets so you can hear the difference. So first we have the Charles Persip or Charlie Persip stick. Next we have the Art Blakey model. And we have the Henry Adler model. Of course, this one is very warped, so it's hard to play with. And we have the Joe Jones model, which is similar. And now we have the Louis Belson model. The lightest of them all. And finally, the Mel Lewis stick, the shortest of them all. That one's my favorite if it could just be about an inch or two longer because it's only 14 and a half inches. But it's the most similar to the stick that I use. So these kinds of comparisons are always an eye-opening experience for me, but I love listening to the records and then kind of knowing, most likely, what stick they were using, and then checking it out and playing it on the cymbal and just, and just listening. Now, of course, all the cymbals these guys used are different. Most of them used Ks, like I know Mel Lewis did, uh, Philly Joe did, um, and, and Charles Persip did, but a lot of them also used A's at the same time throughout their careers. Louis Belson 
most notably used almost all the time he used A's. Maybe in the very early days it was K's, but uh, so his sound is definitely brighter. So, so maybe I'll go and do a video like this on my old A's too, so you can hear the comparison. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll play a little with my sticks now, get a little relief, and we'll see you soon.